Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother, Reverend David Arnold Anderson, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Children of the Heavenly Father, it's printed in your bulletin, and I'll welcome you to stand as able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother David Anderson. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I welcome you to be seated and uh, from uh, myself and the people of Christiania, a warm welcome uh, to all of you. It is a real joy for us to celebrate David's life together. Uh, joy is a strange word. Joy doesn't need uh, just our uh, smiles and our laughs. Joy is also present in the tears and in the grief. And so we gather together knowing that uh, David has, uh, has passed and God has already made plans for what's, what's next. And we're thankful uh, for uh, Jesus Christ in that regard. The, uh, some of the grand, uh, grandsons are going to be reading uh, here, grand, uh, grandsons and granddaughters, right? All sons. I did know this. Um, <laughs> let, me, uh, let me just uh, say, the Andy, the funeral director, asked, oh, do you carry any uh, special angst around about a funeral like this for a pastor? And, uh, and even last night it got mentioned, and I hadn't until last night. <laughs> and, uh, and I realized when I woke up about 3.30, 4 o'clock this morning that I, I'm trying to uh, really keep a lot of, a lot of details uh, together. There is this wonderful trust in this Anderson clan, in God's plan. And so I think it's good when the leader actually uh, makes a mistake. It reminds us that we are not perfect, right? So I'll welcome the grandsons up, and we'll hear, uh, we'll hear the, uh, the word of God in these uh, seven verses. And I will be doing a reading from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. A reading from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. A reading from John, chapter 20, verse 21. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. A reading from Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. <clears throat> he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. A reading from Romans, chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, 
It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, the, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. A reading from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. A reading from Psalm chapter 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, gentlemen. That was uh, wonderful. Louise, happy anniversary. If I, if I understood correctly, this would have been 61 years. And uh, just last week at uh, David's bedside, uh, you, you mentioned this. I don't know if he's going to make it to our, to our anniversary. 
Yeah, that's right. And uh, you've done this really amazing thing, I think, in the world in which we live in. A lot of people would have uh, moved the date of this gathering so it didn't fall on the date of your anniversary. And you didn't, you didn't do that. I think this is a really important part of who David and Louise are in the world. Uh, some of you knew David and Louise before they, they were a thing. <laughs> Which is a way of, of saying some of you knew David when he was, when he was young. And um, I've been around for uh, six years and uh, quickly realized the way the two of them moved in the world was very mutual. And uh, also picked up on these uh, wonderful gifts that the two of them brought to community. Before I got here, they mentioned there are three retired pastors in the congregation, and I thought, well, I, I wonder how that's going to be. <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't the worst thing I could imagine. And in fact, uh, David and uh, Louise sitting right up front, uh, they are, uh, were always my go-to people. When I needed to see some uh, eyes and faces that were engaged in what I'm saying, uh, occasionally uh, sermons take a little bit of a dive. And to have supportive eyes uh, that don't uh, look angry or bored, um, and I uh, came to rely on the two of them being right up front. One of the dangers of being up front each and every week is we get, we get used to it. And uh, I would notice even our online folks, and uh, this reminds me a warm welcome to you folks that have joined our uh, stream, but they would notice when, uh, on the rare instance when David and Louise weren't here. I'm taking a few liberties right now. Uh, another uh, thing this, this family uh, did intentionally was to not include remembrances to not include uh, a, a eulogy. And there's this really wonderful theological reason for that. And, and I think it fits with what we have been gathering for in the visitation last night, and then today before the service, and then we'll gather around the table for food. Uh, we're sharing stories of uh, David and, uh, and the life we shared, and it's an important part of living, but it's really a, an important part of grieving and uh, keeping alive the memory of our uh, loved ones. But we do also desperately need to hear a word of hope in the midst of, of death, and death can be considered a relief it can be considered a freedom. Clearly, these last uh, months, for David, uh, he, he, he wasn't himself. And uh, clearly, when death came, it was a relief. But God has a reason for that, uh, for that relief. And we heard it at, right at the beginning of the service, the Thanksgiving for baptism, which reminds us that in those waters of baptism, we are connected to the death of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are connected to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right in those gifts of the waters of baptism, our forever future is accounted for. It is prepared for us, not because of anything we do or don't do, not because of our own goodness or righteousness, but because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The other uh, 
The other thing, I, I did uh, get permission from Louise to say just a couple of things. And it seems appropriate, but I'll start those things by saying, it is safe to assume that uh, David Anderson was not perfect. And the closer you lived to him, uh, the, the more likely you may have seen those places where he too falls short. Uh, that's just the truth of our humanity. And it's good for us to remember because Jesus Christ was, was different. Jesus Christ was indeed perfect. I'm doing a couple of things out of honor for, uh, for uh, David and Louise, and uh, including wearing, wearing this ulb today, as well as I uh, wrote a couple of notes down, which I normally don't, don't do. But I'm, I'm thinking what an important example uh, David has uh, been in our midst. I mean, I think about the many identities that he would carry around, and he would say himself, first and foremost, child of God, I think uh, for him, family would have been uh, listed second. And he would have been clear about that. I've heard some of the, the teaching that uh, some of you uh, picked up from him over the years, and he was really clear about the right order of things. Father, son, brother, grandfather, pastor, friend, uh, those are just a few of, of them. Many of you are aware of many others, neighbor, etc. He was the gifter of uh, words. I know this because he, he preached... Uh, in the six years I've been here, he preached a number of times until he stopped uh, doing that uh, right here. So I got a chance to hear, and he often did gather around uh, an acrostic, a word that he would uh, break down. And it was in that, uh, that um, in fact, I thought, oh, maybe I'll try to do that at the funeral. And uh, I gave up. <laughs> just, just wasn't wasn't uh, wasn't me. I was spending so much time, but but I think for him, faith was a simple thing, not a complex thing, and he was willing to say it out loud. And he recognized that for people, uh, I heard last night uh, weddings, everybody got gifted with a four-letter word, and uh, what what a gift that is! Something that you can hold on to and remember. And I think he really believed that and trusted that. And I saw it play out a number of times uh, here, in fact. And and you've uh, seen seen that. And I I think maybe that's the the most important thing to tell is about this real practical way of being and living. That there is a mutuality in our relationship with God and with each other that just needs us to willingly show up. And he uh, definitely did that. As I was thinking about David uh, this week, I was thinking about uh, some of these things, this focus on relationship that he clearly had, uh, especially in service to his churches, and uh, among his uh, family, you, you all are uh, the fruits of this focus. And uh, how wonderful to be the fruits of something, to, to, be, to come from uh, this really important and simple way of living. I heard last night uh, sharing, was that Jane, sister, that, that mentioned that word, I think? And how important that is. Like, yeah, uh, he was shared by his family, literally, with the congregations that, uh, that he and Louise uh, served. And uh, what an important part of life and faith that is. Uh, clearly a partner, I already mentioned that. I um, am going to struggle uh, moving into the future uh, without it being Louise and David. And I, I think we'll all experience uh, that. I heard uh, last night about uh, David as a romancer, and I never, never in my life 
uh, that would not have made my top 100 list. <laughs> well, I mean, I've only known him for about six years, so perhaps those romancing days were earlier. <laughs> but uh, I think it was Louise uh, talking about their honeymoon, if I'm not mistaken, to the Baseball Hall of Fame. <laughs> I get it, because I did know he was a Twins fan, and, and we continued to talk about Twins. And in fact, I tried to connect with him on the Twins over these past months, and, and it was not as strong as it once was. But he, his, his, uh, especially his summer clock was set to that. Um, servant is another big uh, word that sticks out for me. We would often see him back at the dishwasher uh, station. How important this is to know uh, that we can be willing to step in and do what needs to be done. The community of faith certainly only functions because that's how people see it. Yeah, I can do that. I'm willing to roll my sleeves up and show up. I'm willing to be a part of this. And uh, seeing David back at the, uh, at the dishwashing area, and uh, Louise and David for many years were the bulletin folders prior to the copy machine we have now, which folds those, uh, those bulletins, but they would show up faithfully every Thursday maybe and, and fold those in preparation. And they had a lot of these little jobs, it turns out, a lot of these little places to live faithfully. He was a dependable and persistent grace-filled. I'm sure he had his opinions on the new pastor in the church. I, I never once heard that from him. I never once heard, you should do this or you should do that. I did hear a willingness to, sh to share when, when asked and how important that was. He was full of wisdom and experience. and gratitude. This is the way for us as people of faith to live with a strong sense of gratitude even when things aren't going great, even when we are experiencing challenges. And uh, that was him. If, if you didn't know, he had a diagnosis and was going through some real health challenges. He, he, probably wouldn't have burdened you with that. And I'd, I'd ask him how, how, how it was going and that smile and he was, he was happy to be, be here. He was an eater, so it was a, it was a little disconcerting these, these last months when part of the journey included times he didn't, didn't want to eat and um, really had an appreciation for, for food. Um, David and Louise were some of the most regular Wednesday evening attendees, and they're here every Sunday, too. This is unusual in our culture. He continued to want to show up even when disease was overtaking him. Continued to want to come on Wednesdays and eat dinner with his church family. What a powerful witness that has uh, been. He was a worshiper and he knew what was most important. And I think it's the hardest for us to get the ordering right. In all of our responsibilities and the tasks at hand and the hard work that we all have to do in the world, it's easy to let those things take precedence over that which is most important and so when we see one who is grounded in good and righteous ways of living it's a gift 
for us to have seen that, even if we have no idea how to do that. Because it does allow a different way of moving in the world. It doesn't make trouble go away. It doesn't help you avoid cancer or addiction or devastation. It doesn't help you avoid death. But it does give purpose. And on this day, on the other side of his death, we can take great confidence that because Jesus Christ crucified and put to death because of Christ's resurrection, David Anderson has also been resurrected. Because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, David Anderson has entered that rare space of salvation. It needs our death. It needs the brokenness of death and the finality of death for what is everlasting. Love God, love people is a word you'll often hear on a Sunday morning from this very pulpit, and I think that is part of the simplicity of faith that David shared, too. Love God first, and out of that love, love people. In this day and age, I think maybe we need that more than ever. It's so easy for us to get caught up in all kinds of disagreements and arguments about who's right and who's wrong. Love God, love people. There's no room for who's right and who's wrong. There is only room for coming up short in either loving God or loving people. I do like these. I do like these words from the beginning of the 14th chapter of John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. What an important word of hope for all of us that Jesus Christ has already prepared the way. And when it is our time, we are called forth. I can't help but carry around that image which changes how I see death. God is in the lead of that kind of death. When it's time for your uh, arrival in your forever home, right there with God, it happens. The only necessity is death. I'm imagining David's arrival in heaven and uh, these words from uh, the parable of the talents in Matthew 25. Jesus uh, teaches us, about using our talents, not hiding them, using them once used, the master says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. What uh, wonderful words to hear. And uh, I see a lot of heads shaking, which makes me think, uh, you think the same thing about David Anderson. Well done, good and faithful servant. Lastly, Marin, I think, had uh, suggested 
which is a great idea. I'm, I'm so glad to have others that are thinking of things because I don't always think of all of the details. But, and then I saw a mask last night. By a show of hands, how many of you here were baptized by Pastor David? A few? Okay. And uh, how many of you were married by Pastor David? Ah, yeah, yeah. And how many of you had, maybe in your immediate family, uh, uh, Pastor David overseeing a burial, a death, funeral? Yeah. Again, another example of of the fruits, the fruits. Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen and amen. I'll ask uh, that, that you all stand as able and uh, join me as we express our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he, raised, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, give courage and faith to all who mourn and a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. we get a chance to see all of the, the pieces of uh, ministry for David, his, his, one of his important callings in life. And uh, under this communion kit is, is a um, wood-paneled uh, container that would hold the clericals, the, co the collars, and that is where his ashes are uh, stored. Very uh, well done and uh, clever. We'll hear these words of commendation, and it reminds me, God is the one who does this work. But we're saying out loud the important things, and we're leaning into trusting that those words are uh, true. So we give the commendation here, after we're done, we will enjoy a dinner together, and then we will head over to the uh, over to the cemetery to finish our work. And so, let us commend David Arnold Anderson to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior. We commend your servant, David. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen.
And as we uh, go to eat, this is one of the simplest things that is really important to David. It, it was just a, a table prayer. So uh, please join me in what might be a familiar table prayer for all of us. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. May uh, you all know you are beloved children of God. May we walk in simple faith today and always knowing this blessing and, uh, and carrying it and sharing it wherever we go. Blessed to be a blessing. We say this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's uh, sing together on our way rejoicing.